Okay, this video is for the P4 explaining motion section of the additional science syllabus and also for triple science physicists. Um, we're going to start off with something simple, uh, speed. Uh, the equation for speed is on the formula sheet. It doesn't mention the word instantaneous, which we'll come on to in a second. As with all equations, we've got to, we've got to be careful with the units. Uh, these are fairly straightforward. Meters for the distance, uh, seconds for time, and meters per second for speed. And the word instantaneous just means that we're talking about speed at one particular point in time. So that might be measured like by the speedometer on a car, which of course changes depending on how fast you're going. Uh, and in practice, if you're trying to measure an instantaneous speed, you need to measure over a very short time interval. So uh, a yellow speed camera, one of the roadside speed cameras that takes two photographs, that's a fairly good approximation of a measurement of instantaneous speed because the two uh, flashes, the two photographs, are very close together. So it's a short time interval. The speed can't change much during that time. Okay, so uh, contrasting with instantaneous speed is average speed. Uh, again, the units are the same, meters, seconds, and meters per second. Uh, but the average speed is measured over an entire journey. Okay, so we have to be careful here to use the formula and put total distance and total time in and not to average the separate speeds of the sections of a journey. So if you had a journey broken down into several different sections, uh, you wouldn't just take the average of each of the individual sections. You have to use total distance divided by total time, otherwise it won't get the right answer. You should also note that this formula is not on the formula sheet. The average speed formula is not there. Speed equals distance over time is there, but not this one. Um, also a point to note that you've got to be slightly careful. If you were doing an experiment where you repeated a set of measurements to get a speed, you can still do a normal average there. We're only doing the average speed in this way if we're talking about the speed, the average speed over an entire journey, not the average of several different experiments. Okay, So repeat readings in a table, you can still average those. That's not a problem. Okay, so um, pause the video now then and try and apply those formulae. I've put the speed formula at the bottom. That's the one you'd be using in the uh, exam from the formula sheet. So have a go at these, pause while you do it, and we'll go through the answers in a sec. Okay, so let's have a look at these then. Some speed calculations. Uh, number one, first of all. We should note that units are important. Okay, So to get a speed in meters per second, which we've been asked for, we have to have all the distances in meters and all the times in seconds. So what I've got here is the red dotted underlines are going to be units that need to be changed, and the green ones are correct. So if we look, there are three units that are in the standard, three quantities in the standard units. 150 meters is fine, 40 seconds is fine, 500 meters also fine. But kilometers and minutes are not the standard units, so we'll need to change those before we can do the calculations. So we're going to do all of them together at the start, okay, and convert. And so the box shows you three kilometers is 3,000 meters. Every time you see the little K, that means kilo, it's always 1,000. 1,000 right, grams in a kilogram, 1,000 meters in a kilometer. And as we all know, 60 seconds in a minute. So if you have 10 minutes, that's 600 seconds, 4 minutes, 240 seconds. So we're just going to change those now. Uh, in replace them, there goes the three kilometers, there goes the 10 minutes, and there goes the four minutes there. So now we've got everything in the right units, we can actually do the calculations. Okay, so use the formula and you literally just substitute in the numbers where we have the appropriate quantity. So um, this is where we have to be very careful about our units as well because. Nowhere in the question, it says the cyclist travels the first 150 metres in 40 seconds. Nowhere does it say the words distance and time. Now, for these quantities, it's straightforward. You know the units of distance is metres, and you know, hopefully, the units of time is seconds. But sometimes, with more obscure quantities, you will have to know the units so you can know where to put the number, which quantity it matches up with in the equation. So here's straightforward, 150 metres goes to the top, 40 seconds on the bottom, 3.75 metres per second. Similarly for the next one, 5 metres per second, and finally 2.08. If you do the calculation on this one, you'll get um, more decimal places than this. Significant figures are, and decimal places are important, and uh, there'll be a separate video to sort of discuss how many are appropriate. But if you're ever in doubt, 
a good rule of thumb is three significant figures or two decimal places um, is probably enough. Okay, uh, that's a very simple rule, but it'll probably be fine if you do that. So there's question one. Question two: the average speed for the cyclist journey. Well, you can't do this. Okay, lots of students write down, oh, it's I've got the three sections. Here's add them all up and divide by three to get my average. You can't. Okay, we discussed this in the first, when we um looked at the average speed formula, you have to do total distance divided by total time. Okay, so that's wrong. What we have to do is this. Total distance on the top, so I've just added up the distances. There's 150 metres, the 3,000 metres, and the 500 metres, all on the top there to make 3,650 metres. And added up the times, 40 plus 600 plus 240 gives me 880 seconds. Do the division and you get 4.15. Note that is different to 3.61, okay? It's much closer to this value for part B. It's closer to the 5 meters per second. And the reason for that is the reason you can't do this normal average is because it's 600 seconds that we spend at 5 meters per second. So that's going to be much more important than the 40 seconds we spend at 3.75 meters per second. Okay? Really important to realize that. Okay? So the 4.15 meters per second is the correct answer. And then finally number three, well this is uh, one that requires you to rearrange the equation. You're given speed and you're given distance and you're asked to work out time. So the how long tells us that we're after time. Okay, So you've got to look out for these keywords as well. Again, how long implying time is not too tricky, but sometimes there'll be other examples that are a bit more subtle than that. Okay, So we look at the formula. You could have a choice. Some people like to rearrange it first. Um, some people like to put the numbers in first. Here I've put the numbers in first. It doesn't matter really which way around you do it. So substituting the values. So the speed is 400. So where it says speed, I write the 400. The distance, 2 kilometers. Again, kilometers into 2,000 meters where it says distance. And then the time is left on its own. And then we've got to get this on its own. This is the trickiest one because if you've, if you've got to find a quantity that's on the bottom of a division, you've got two steps, okay? Multiply both sides by time to get rid of the time on the bottom over here. Okay, gives us 400 times time is 2,000. Then divide by the 400 to get rid of it and get time on its own. So time is 2,000 divided by 400 meters per second, which equals 5 seconds. If you're not comfortable with rearranging the equations, then there is an alternative. There's the triangle method. There's a separate video, which I'll put the link overlaid onto, um, so you can have a look at that in the technique section. You can go and look at the triangle method if you are uncomfortable with rearranging equations. Okay. Right, so that's our first set of, of questions uh, checked through. The next thing we're going to look at is the difference between these two quantities, displacement and distance, which sound kind of similar, and they are. Okay. Starting with distance, it's kind of difficult to define what distance is, but it's really the total length of the path that you travel. Okay. And it doesn't matter which direction you're going in. Okay, there'll be. A, well, I'm going to share a little illustration to exam. Uh, to sorry, example to illustrate this in a second. Um, so you you can never decrease the distance you've travelled. It always increases. Okay, if I go three meters and then I go another two meters, I can't. I can't have gone less than three meters. I've gone five meters. Okay, so you, your distance travel can never go down over the course of time. And uh, you may have used probably at primary school uh, something like a surveyor's wheel to measure distance, where you you run it along and it clicks, and um, every time it rotates around, it measures another meter. Okay, so that's one um, instrument you can use to measure distance. So then, what's the difference between distance and displacement? Well, the example is the best way to illustrate this. Displacement is the total straight line distance from your starting point to your end point. So for displacement, we don't care about how you got from your start point to your end point. We just care about what the distance between them is. Whereas for distance, we definitely do care about how you get there. So if you watch the little blue blob, it's going to um, wander across the screen uh, along a particular path. So the blue line is showing the path that it's taking. Okay, It's quite a complicated path, and it gets to the end point. Okay? So the distance is the length of that blue line. That's how far it's actually travelled. But displacement is just the length of that red line from the start to the end point as the crow flies. That's displacement. And displacement also has this idea of direction in there. So it tells us which way we've gone as well as how far. Now, because in GCSE you only worry about uh, moving in a straight line, then what we can say is that displacement in one direction is positive and displacement in the other direction is negative. It's a bit like a number line. So here I've got my little blue bob again, and we, I've said 
that to the right is positive and to the left is negative. It doesn't have to be that way around. But whenever you do a question um, with all of these quantities that have plus or minus that have a direction associated with them, as long as you stick with the same direction being positive, so if if you pick right is positive at the start of the question, you've got to stay with it, and you stick with the same direction as being negative, then it will all work out. Okay. So, for example, that that first blue blob has moved a distance of four meters, and its displacement is plus four meters because it's moved in the plus direction. Okay. The second blue blob it's moved a bit further. It's moved six meters, but the displacement because it's moved the opposite way to the first one is minus six meters. So you see, there's no plus or minus in the distance part. We don't care which direction. We just care how far. But in the displacement, there's a plus or minus because it tells us the direction as well. And all you have to worry about at GCSE is plus for one way, minus the opposite way. Okay, so a slightly more complicated example. Um, and this is kind of really higher tier only. That if the object moves one way and then back the other way, well, what do we have then? So if watching the blue bob, it moves four meters away from the starting point, and then two meters back again, then it's moved a distance of six meters. If we if we had the little surveyor's wheel and we were clicking that out, it would have clicked up to six meters because we moved four meters there, two meters back. But its displacement, its distance from its starting point, the little blue line here, is only two meters because we've gone four there, two back, which means there's two left uh, away from where we started. But it's plus two meters because we're, we're in the plus direction. It's It's ended up in the plus direction from where it started. So that's just a slightly more complicated example about the, dis the, the difference between displacement and distance. Okay, so some questions then. Um, pause the video again, have a go at these. Um, in each case, what is the final distance travelled and the final displacement? So again, you're just making sure you can, you're can you clear on the difference between the two. Pause and then we'll check. Okay, so number one. A boy walks 20 metres to the bus stop outside his home, has missed the bus, he then walks another 100 metres down the road in the same direction to his friend's car. So it's often a good idea to picture, try and picture or draw a diagram for, for lots of problems in physics, and this is no exception. Right? Because he's always travelling in the same direction, it's quite a simple one, but if we look at it, he moves from, uh, well, if you use a little green blob for the starting point here, he moves 20 metres in the first part of the description. And he moves another 100 metres in the same direction to his end point, which is the little red blob. Okay, So his distance travels is 120 metres, and because he's going in the same direction, his displacement is 120. We, we could say plus 120 there, really, we should say. Um, but they're the same, because he's moving in the same direction. So a simple one to start with. Now number two, a uh, dog chasing after a rabbit runs 80 metres directly away from his master, and then his master calls him back, and the dog comes trotting all the way back to his master. That means, if we use our little picture, he changes direction, so it's slightly more complicated. Here's our starting point. He goes 80 metres there. He goes 80 metres back. So his distance travelled is, is those two 80s added together, 160 metres. But his final displacement, he's back where he started, so it's zero metres. He, he hasn't gone anywhere as far as his displacement is concerned. All right. So 160 metres distance travelled, displacement zero metres, because he's back where he started. And finally, number three is is slightly trying to catch you out. It gets a little bit harder. Um, again, we've switched to up, down here, but that doesn't matter. Left, right, up, down doesn't make any difference. We can still use the same convention. Okay. Um, so we've got to be careful. Uh, 0 0.8 metres down, it says, as the girl is playing with the yo-yo, drops it out of her hand straight down to the end of its string, which is 0 0.8 metres long. She then tries to pull it back up, but it ends up stuck dangling 0 0.2 metres below her hand. If you're not being careful, you see the 0 0.2 and go, oh, okay, 0 0.2 back up. But it's actually telling us how far away it is from her hand. So if we think about that, that means that if it's 0 0.2 metres below her hand, which was the starting point, then it must have gone 0 0.6 metres back up to make up to the 0 0.8. So distance travelled is 1.4 metres. 0.8 down, 0 0.6 back up. But the displacement has been told to us directly in the question. It tells us it ends up 0 0.2 metres below her hand, which is the starting point. And um, because we started off going down, I've taken down as the positive direction. And the yo-yo ends up below where it started, so that's plus 0 0.2 metres. Okay, hopefully those examples uh, help to illustrate to you the difference between uh, distance and displacement. And that's the uh, end of this particular video.